Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now going to answer question uh, number two, part B. From this is actually from one of my end of chapter or you know end of section questions at the end of a particular section of a lesson. This is chapter six point six integration. Um, this is about differential equations and solving differential equations. And uh, these are this is one of the questions at the end of that particular lesson in the test your understanding section which i set for the students to do and one of the students has asked me to go through this particular question so i will do so we have to solve find the particular solution to this differential equation now when we are solving a differential equation first of all a differential equation is an equation which has dy dx in it okay some of them have d squared y dy dx squared in it as well but those are called second order differential equations in p4 we only deal with first order differential equation so this is a first order differential equation because it has dy dx in it now to solve a differential equation you have to express it as y equals something you have to basically get rid of the dy dx and have it in terms of x and y without the without the x without the dy dx in it so what we're going to do is we're going to what i'm going to do is to get rid of the dy dx i'm going to integrate both sides of this equation with respect to x. So I have y times e y squared dy dx. I'm going to integrate this side with respect to x. I'm also going to integrate the other side with respect to x also. That's e to the power of 2x dx. So what you do to one side, you do to the other. Integrate one side with respect to x because in the equation we've got to keep it balanced so we integrate the other side also with respect to x. Alright, so now what happens here is these cancel out. So you're left with, on this side, y e, e y squared, e to the power of y squared, and this side, e to the power of 2x dx. Now, what we normally do with differential equations is we separate the variables, but here there's nothing needs to be separated because all the y terms are on the side that says dy, and all the x terms are on the said side that say says dx. Okay, so I don't need to separate the variables, okay, because they're already in their right places. The y terms are on the side which has dy, and the x terms on the side which has, which is being integrated with respect to x, dx. Now, to find the particular solution, um, there's two different methods we could use from here. I prefer to use the particular method I'm going to show you now, where I put y on the side that says dy on the top limit, and x on the top limit of the side that says dx. And then with particular solutions, they always give you a value of x and y to use um, uh, that we want to find the particular solution for. So where it says y i'm going to put on the bottom limit the value they gave us and where it says dx i'm going to put on the bottom limit the value they gave us alternatively i could solve it and have plus c and then i could substitute these values of x and y into the expression i get with the c and find what c is and then i will get the same answer but i prefer to do it this way i think this is much easier now i'm guessing that the problem that the student had was in integrating this this side is absolutely no problem. e to the power of something integrates by keeping it the same. But then you divide by the differential of what's inside the function, so we divide by 2. And this is going to be with the limits of x and a half. All right, now, what we actually did here was actually something called the reverse of the chain rule. Because there's actually a 1 here that's multiplying this. And this is like something of the form of the differential of something multiplied by you could say inside this function you've got that thing so this is the differential of what's inside that function all right and you, when you see something like this you can reverse the chain rule so one is of the same form of the differential of 2x when you differentiate 2x you get constant so this is of this form and that's why we could just integrate this as normal and then divide by the differential of what's inside the function, okay? When you integrate something with like e to the power of 2x, e to the power of x integrates by staying the same. It doesn't change, but then you have to check if there's a function inside the function and you divide by the differential of that. Now, here we have something very similar to this because it's like you have e to the power of y squared. This is like the part that's inside the function. The main function is e to the power of something and this is what's inside the function and it's been multiplied by the differential of that thing because y is of the form of the differential of y squared if you differentiate y squared we get 2y so y is of the right order 
So it's again of this form here, where you have a function inside a function. So the main function, the main function is e to the power of something. Inside the function is y squared. And outside the function, okay, multiplying the function is something of the form of the differential of what's inside it. So we can use the reverse of the chain rule here as well. So I differentiate this as normal. So I'm gonna have y, I'll just this is how I like to write it, y e to the power of y squared divided by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 2y, and you'll notice they cancel out. The y's cancel out there, and you've got something e to the power of y squared over 2. You end up with e to the power of y squared over 2. And if we were to differentiate this, when you differentiate something like this, it stays the same first, because that's how you differentiate something. Then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function using the chain rule, so multiplied by 2y, the 2's cancel, you're left with y times e to the power of y squared. So we can see by differentiating this, we get what we started with. So we can check that we're correct there. Okay, so that's how we deal with uh, integrating such a function. So let me just simplify this a little bit first. So this is e to the power of y squared over 2, y and 1 as your limits, and e to the power of 2x over 2, and you have x and a half as your limits. What I can do is I can take out the, I can multiply both sides by 2, so I can get rid of those 2, so I have e y squared, y and 1, and e to the power of 2x, and x and a half. I've just multiplied both sides by 2 to get rid of these 2s. Okay, and now I can say e to the power of y squared minus, I'll put 1 inside of there, e to the power of 1 squared, which is e to the power of 1, which is e, equals, and I'm, I'm going to put x inside here, so that's e to the power of 2x um, minus e to the power of 2 times a half is 1. one. So we can see here that these two will you know cancel out, so I'm left with e to the power of y squared equals e to the power of 2x. So I can rewrite this in terms of y because we have these two have the same base. Okay, so the powers must be the same. That means y squared equals 2x. We could also say take the lin of both sides, in case in that case you get y squared equals 2x so that's the answer we can leave it like that if we want to we want to put it strictly in terms of of y we can say y is equal to the square root of 2x and there's the answer to this question question part b of question 2 from the end of like uh, the lesson test your understanding from chapter 6.6 .6 from my notes in integration um i hope that was clear and you understood it um, and, um, you know, you, you'll find other questions from Test Your Understanding of this chapter if I'm asked to answer them in the playlist over here and other questions from um, differential equations and integration in this playlist over there. Um, thank you for watching. See you soon.